OK. Once you have posted your proving grounds, your different sketch approaches, and you've given input to at least one other student, but preferably more like three other students, then you will hopefully have some input to read about your own work, right? And once you have some, some divergent opinions, because this proving ground is all about convergent and divergent thinking in the design process. So convergent means that you have an approach, but then you work within that approach to make it better. So that's what you're going to do next. You're going to pick one of your three, and you're going to refine it. So if I pick dynamic, and I can do this with any of the three, even if I hate the sketch, in the next stage it could be made into something with that convergent approach, working with what's in that design, but, but trying to make the most of it. The divergent points of view are taking in the input from your fellow classmates, right? Thinking about things that could be improved. Um, maybe they like one that you really don't like and trying to see the value in it. But also, when you refine your approach in your convergent thinking, you want to think through what the end product is going to be. So if the end product is going to be on a white square tile, it's always helpful to think of what a usage of this logo would be. Doing it as just line art doesn't make any sense. So I define, in, and this is, this is more of a refined sketch than you might actually want to do, but to make it really useful, I like kind of defined with a thin pencil all the different shapes I might be able to use. But then I have to decide which of those shapes gets filled in as solid black so that it can be cut out. And I really wanted to minimize too much of these thin black lines because as that shrinks, it becomes less and less visible, right? So a logo should be visible and understandable even at that size, that kind of postage stamp size. And I think that one still is. Like it has enough solid black in those shapes. But some of the others don't, even if I like them at bigger scale. So even just choosing between how do I fill in the eyes or how do I fill in the helmet, this got too fussy. And then I noticed something, too, that I really like. I could hide a little um, nod to the official campus logo, the Alamo College District logo, in the helmet design right there. So I have that kind of turned on its side. And so as you refine it, you'll see opportunities for how to make the most out of these shapes. Once you have that refined sketch, that's going to be the thing we post in the actual assignment that we work from. So I'm going to do a screen grab of my refined sketch here. And then we move on to building it in Illustrator. A lot of time, building an Illustrator means simplifying the shapes. And if possible, like you did with your exercise two emoji, building them with simple shape tools first. So you can see how this positive negative space logo of birds is really created just by overlapping these basic shapes and then choosing some good diagonals and then choosing what gets filled in with black and what's the negative space. In this, in this presentation, I also give you kind of a, a cheat sheet guide to some of the tougher tools in Illustrator, like the pen tool. You can find different tutorials that can help online as well. But basically, the pen tool can do everything for you, but it's awkward to use. So if you want to try to master it, because you think you'll be using Illustrator a lot, you want to work as a graphic designer, you want to create a lot of logos, you want to do type design, it's, it's worth trying to figure out the pen tool with this project. And then I give you some tips about refining it. You can add texture. You can play with um, different fill options besides just solid color. And you can use customized shapes as well, not just basic shapes. 
But I'm also going to teach you tools like the blob brush. This is my favorite tool. So you can just pretty much paint your logo and then clean it up, especially with a tablet. Especially once we have our new computers, which if they're set up correctly, like the three in the back are, the, our blob brush will be, with the tablet, will be pressure sensitive and just beautiful to use. Just in time for, for finishing them off. Okay, so this presentation will give you everything you need for your question of the day, for your proving ground, for your background, and then for some tips on logo design. And that presentation is with the question of the day. So I don't want you to skip that before midnight tonight to put your thoughts in on what the advantages are of vectors over raster now that you're thinking through that as we're building them. So those slides are right there. Now let's move on to once you know your approach, you've finished your proving ground, you've given input, you've read your fellow students input on your design. Now we can post our refined sketch and start building it. So I'm going to post mine. And we have all next class period to work on it and about half the class to add a color version a week from today. But that's also when your group presentations are due a week from today. So I'm going to take that screen grab of my refined sketch, post it. And this is a little bit more ornate than I would recommend you try to try to, to do your first time using Illustrator. But by doing it, it, I'll be able to show you a lot of skills in Illustrator and how to build it. And think of it like cutting out black paper. Now the next thing I'm going to post is my black shape vector. And this is going to be in what's called, it's an EPS file that I rasterize using Photoshop into a PNG file, just like your cutout creature. I'll call it free floating. Because you can't put a vector file into Canvas. But we'll create it first as a, an EPS vector file. And then from that one EPS, we could scale it to any size. So I'll organize that by putting my refined sketch also into my assignment four folder, along with my sketches. And to get this project started, I'm going to open up that refined sketch, not with Photoshop, but with Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to get my tablet set up. And this is a brand new program for us. All right. All right, so I have opened up my sketch uh, in Illustrator, this new program. I zoomed out so you can see clearly. Illustrator puts your image on what it calls an artboard. So we didn't say, you know, open this to a certain size. It just gives us an artboard. This artboard is based on the resolution of my screen. But vector files don't have a resolution. So your image can actually be moved off of the artboard. And sometimes I recommend that so that you can make sure you're not using colors or things you don't want. In this case, we're only going to use black shapes. We don't want to use any white shapes. Right. So this is not a vector file. This is the pixel base, the raster file that I brought in of my refined sketch. It was created just with pen and ink and then scanned in. And you can see how loose it was kind of colored in. I don't 
don't know if I want the finished logo to have that kind of texture to it. I want it to first be kind of a clean option. So the first thing I'm going to do is onion skin this. And that's a term for putting tracing paper over it, making it lighter. To do that, I'm going to find the layer that it's in. And you'll find layers on the side. There's properties and then layers. And then I'm going to double click on the image. You have to double click not on the title of it, ah. but on the image. And then I'm going to go to Window and Transparency. So unlike the layers in Photoshop, these layers are just an organizational tool. Each layer doesn't have its automatic opacity. So I have to go to the Transparency tool I'm actually going to move this window into my sidebar here. And I'm going to set the transparency of my sketch to 50%. So that is onion skinning. We're basically dimming the image. So on the gray background, it looks like that. Using the move tool on the white background, it looks like that. Remember, it doesn't matter if I hold down Shift and grow it from the corner. This is different than Photoshop too. You have to hold down shift to lock its proportions. Otherwise it will distort. So definitely hold down shift. And you don't have to hit return <laughs> like I just did. Like you do in Photoshop. So there's little differences. Okay, now, now that I have my sketch and I've dimmed its opacity to 50%, now I can lock that sketch. So next to the eyeball, this is new in Illustrator. There is a little padlock place. And you're going to want to organize your layers, and you're going to want to lock a lot of things. That means you can't accidentally affect it. Then I want to create a new layer. And there, there is a little post-it, create new layer, right at the bottom, just like it is in Photoshop. You can click on that. Should be able to click on that. Maybe I need to unlock it first and then click on it. Oh, I'm in isolation mode. I don't want to be in isolation mode. Why is it in isolation mode? Because I hit something. So view, preview on CPU. I got to get used to this new version of Illustrator. So if you find yourself in isolation mode, which you don't want to be in, you'll find the little flow chart at the top of how you got there. And so you want to go back to where you're not seeing that flow chart anymore. So this is how it should be. We have layer one, which is an organizational folder, basically, that contains our sketch image. That image has been reduced in opacity to 50%. Right? I lock that. And then I can make a new layer on top of it. There's a little color that goes with each layer. That color is the, the color that the anchors and the algorithmic paths are going to be shown. So you have like a red path and a blue path now. Let me just show you the most basic thing, similar to what we were doing with exercise two. You have the large move tool. You have what I call the large selection tool which is like the move tool in Photoshop. But you also have a white arrow, and this is what I call the small selection tool, but its proper name is the direct selection tool. You have the pin tool, you have the freeform pin tool, but if you open up the pin tool, you'll see that it also has something that helps you shift your anchor points underneath it. You have the shape tool, so this is what we've used before. So if I was going to try to use the shape tool to like say make an eye for my image, it's complicated because that shape I can draw and I can hold down shift and make it a perfect circle, right? So say I'm trying to do this eye. But then I have to choose whether it's filled with black, filled with white, or not filled at all. And you'll see that under these color options. You can also see them here. So I'm going to fill it with black. 
And then you can see that 